Okay, let me continue with the characterization for uh, least squares and minimum norm solutions. And uh, we have theorem 2.13, and it says the following is equivalent. First, I mean, uh, we have uh, the usual setting, so we are in a Hilbert space. We are looking for a least squares solution of the um, of the equation a u equals zero or k u equals zero. Uh, u is a least squares solution of k u equals g. It's the same as k star k u is the same as k star g or k u is the projection of g onto the uh, range on the closure of the range of the uh, image of a so um, P is the orthogonal projection onto the range of K closure. Okay, let's uh, prove this. Oops. Let's prove this. And uh, in the usual way, we go from one to two. And uh, actually, more or less, you already saw that in the last lecture. So um, let u uh, the square solution. And I will always uh, abbreviate that with MS2. Now set V equal to K star K U minus G and uh, define the function F of Lambda as uh, the norm of K times U plus Lambda V minus G and so that I'm writing down the two here, that's really in Hilbert space now. KU plus lambda V minus G. Um, and uh, as the last time, uh, since U minimizes uh, the, uh, the norm of KU, uh, um, KU minus G, um, this has a minimum at lambda equals zero. Okay, so uh, let's say what this is. This is just the norm of KU minus G squared plus two times the uh, norm of, uh, of, of the scalar product of KU minus G and lambda times uh, KV. So I'm taking the lambda out plus, well, the norm of lambda kv squared. But uh, I'll take the lambda square out. So it's this. OK, since this has a minimum at lambda equals 0 and everything's differentiable in lambda, we have that um, f prime of 0 is 0, which implies that the scalar product of KU minus G and V is zero. Okay, but uh, V was defined as this one above. Let me, okay, uh, KV, I'm, I'm sorry. Oops. 
And uh, I did one thing wrong. Uh, there's the KV over here, of course. So this has to be a K and also this has to be a K. Now, if this is zero, um, by the definition of the adjoint, I can also write this as K star, KU minus G, scalar product with V. And now look at my definition of V. So this is exactly the same as the scalar product of V with itself. So it's norm of V squared, which means that V is zero, which implies that K star K or K adjoint KU is equal to K adjoint times G. And this is what I had implied. Okay, now let's go from two to three. And uh, well, I already prepared this. So I just had it like this way. Now uh, take any V in X. Um, um, let's assume that now K star K U is equal to K star G, right? Okay, uh, then take any V in X and we have that uh, Obviously, now uh, K star K U scalar product with V very slow is zero, which means that K U minus G scalar product with K V zero. So this says that uh, obviously these are all elements in uh, the range of K. And this is an element of range of K. So uh, we have that uh, KU minus G is uh, orthogonal to the range of K, and that was exactly our characterization for the projection. So we find that KU is the projection of, um, of G onto range of k and of course I can only project on the closure. Okay, um, you can already see that this poses a major problem. If we have a least square solution, then we need to solve this equation over here. Um, this equation, so we need to solve this normal equation. Now, why, why is that difficult? Well, uh, this is a projection on the closure. So uh, it's not guaranteed that um, the projection on the closure is actually an element of the range. And I gave you an example before. So generally, this will be unsolvable. Now we can already say what what is the requirement for um, for the equation uh, k u equals g to have a least square solution. Um, well, if g, oops, I'm sorry, the projection onto the range. Uh, must uh, on the closure of the range must actually be in the range. So what does this mean? We need 
we need to require that G is in the range plus the range perp, right? I mean, that's, uh, um, this is always true if we take uh, the closure on the left on the, over the range, but if we don't, then that's the requirement that we have to have this. Uh, the um, the uh, projection must be in the range, not in the closure of the range. Okay, now we have that the perp of R of A, according to our characterizations uh, in the last video, this is the null space, it's the kernel of a adjoint. So uh, we have the requirement that G is in the range plus the kernel of A adjoint. So we see that this normal equation is not always solvable if we go to infinite, infinite dimensional operators. And that's now the big difference to uh, finite dimensional operators because uh, then we can always do without uh, this closure and um, well, then uh, everything becomes solvable immediately. Okay, so that's uh, the problem we will be talking about several weeks, probably. Um, let me continue. And show that if we have three, then it also follows one. Well, for all V and X, we have that the norm of uh, kv minus g oops excuse me oh, let's let me do it correctly so let's now assume that ku is equal to pg and uh, um, let's take uh, the norm of kv minus g for any v in x. Now, this is the same as the norm of ku minus g plus k uh, times uh, v, v minus u. Now, um, this is of course something which is in the range of k. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I I was writing down a here. Um, let me correct this to k. Sorry. I always switch between operators a and k. I decided to take k for, uh, for this lecture. But now this backfires. Well, Okay, um, now this is an element in the range of K. Now, oops, KU minus G I don't know why this happens all the time. KU minus G, now um, KU is PG. So uh, this is the projection onto the kernel, onto the range of k on the closure of the range of k. So uh, this is uh, um, orthogonal to the range of k. Now these two are obviously orthogonal. So this is the same as norm of KU minus G squared plus the norm of K times V minus U by Pythagoras. And now we find that this is larger or equal than the norm of KU minus G for any vector V, for any element V in X. So uh, that means that u is a least square solution.
Okay, and let me see, is there anything? Yeah, I have some corollaries, but um, I was told that I should make my videos as short as possible, so I'm keep, keeping a break.